Hey, so I am Jamie. We're here at Infinite Reality Stay at Home Con, which means hopefully everyone's at home. And I get to talk to Josh. Josh Hood is amazing. He is a local artist who's been a friend forever, it feels like, um, which is awesome. And you were one of the co-creators of We Can Never Go Home by Black Mask, but you've also been doing some Star Trek work too. That's right. Yeah. So tell us, how did you get into comics? Uh, like originally as a little kid or professionally? Column A, column B. As a little kid, my dad brought home a couple of copies of, uh, one was a, I think it was a Fantastic Four, and the other one was a, a Dazzler comic for my little sister, and she hated it, so I kept both of them. That's awesome. Dazzler yeah. discorific. It was. Dazzler had to smash a mirror to power her sound powers up to laser this guy in the face. It was it was a really good book. It's actually the better of the two books. It doesn't surprise me. It's strangely there is a, a subgroup of Dazzler fans that are some of the most loyal people you will ever see. Like Dazzler and Magic, they have some like that's their people. Danny Moonstar's another one. Um so but how did you get professionally into comics? I went to Dragon Con in the late nineties. I was a kid. I mean, I was maybe 20, 21 years old. <clears throat> and there, this used to be the time when um, Marvel and DC editors would travel from convention to convention and actually sit at a table in Artist Alley and judge portfolios. Oh, so like portfolio reviews. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I mean, they would be exhaustive sometimes. I, I sat in front of, um, Oh, God, who was it? I'll never remember. But uh, it could go 20, 30 minutes sometimes. And there would always be maybe two or three people in line. And they were very good about waiting and, and seeing, like, everybody back then. And now you can't. Forget about it. You're not going to get it. They're not going to talk to you. So I, I showed my work. And um, I just got a job. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. it was as simple as that. Like, oh, I got I got some stuff for you to work on. Can you start in you know in two weeks? Like, oh, yeah, sure. I can talk books. That's fantastic. Like that's that's really cool. But yeah, I can't imagine like now Marvel and DC kind of just wait for people to come to them. It seems like. Well, there's such a, a, a huge pool of talent right now, and the talent has never been as high. It's never been as good. I know everybody wants to look back at the golden age and say, uh, "Well, they're they're cherry picking from individual periods and slamming all those guys together who worked maybe." concurrently over the course of their careers, but not literally at the same time. You look at the amount of talent that's in books now, and it's ridiculous how high it is. They can't produce at the volume, but the, the sheer ability is there. What, are you, what have you been impressed by lately? Uh, every time I turn around, there's some new person I've never heard of. Um, my favorite from the last, I have to like, bucket it together in like five year periods because all of a sudden, you know, uh, these guys, I've known these guys for a while. Um, James Heron, who did rumble for image yeah. for a while. Uh, that's some of the most dynamic kind of stuff I've ever seen in American comics. It, it feels Japanese, but isn't Japanese. Um, well, let's just look on the old spinner rack. Uh, Olivier Coipel. How do you pronounce his name? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Copio. I thought, I mean, he was doing Thor a decade ago, but the Magic Order was fantastic, and uh, it's just so much, so much good stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, you have a spinner rack? I'm jealous. I have a trade spinner rack, and it's packed full, and I've tried to find another one. I've even taken it apart, found the company's name, contacted them to try to find a replacement, to try to find another one to stick next to it, and I, they just don't make them anymore. I can't find them. Yeah, actually, um, the the place that used to make comic book ex store exclusive fixtures, uh, Skylight, they went out of business. We we found a piece. We're like, oh, let's see about ordering them, and we called and disconnected. I was like, wow, that's weird. But so what you're saying is there's a space in the market. Yeah. <laughs> so all we need is somebody to get out there. What's your brother David up to, Chris? Right. Right. Um, so lately uh what have you been have you been working on anything lately are you just kind of staying busy or yeah no um everybody else's pencils down but I'm, I'm booked up through the end of the year i um that's excellent i signed a contract through 
Dark Horse to do a, a short run series. Can't say what it is, of course, because nobody can ever talk about the work that they're working on at the time. Um, but I've also got, I'm halfway through a 200 page graphic novel that this writer is funding himself, wow. crazily enough. Uh, so I've still got, you know, as soon as I'm done with the work that I'm doing now, I've still got like six, seven months plotted out in this economy, you know, with the way things are going to go in the next six months to two years, I'm very lucky. That's awesome. That's really cool. So, yeah, you can't talk about them, of course. I um, can't. Ugh. But do you, are, do you have like a schedule that you're following now when you're staying at home to stay on track or do you just kind of wing it? Normally, I'm a five page a guy, a five page week guy or, or like slightly under, but usually around there. I get a book out a month. Yeah. But uh, this uh, this uh, Corona thing, man, between taking care of my daughter and having to plan the way you're going to live your life, you know, we're cooking so much more and we have to clean so much more and we have to do so many more sort of things without actually doing things. You got to check in on a lot of people and there's a lot of Zoom meetings that take up a lot of space. And um, I'm having a re- I'm really struggling to stay productive. That's, uh, well, at least you have something to do, though. So you're not, you know, sitting there twiddling your thumbs at home going, where are the comic books for me to sell? <laughs> oh, my God. I would so much rather be bored. I would, uh, I mean, I love my daughter. But if I if this were five years ago or five years from now, I would be high like one out of every three nights. <laughs> I'd be playing video games until four in the morning. Um, but you just can't do that with a kid, with a kid in single digits. You just, you have to be so much more responsible. You got to wait till they're old enough for you to hide it from them, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, actually, I borrowed our partner Brandon's PS4. He loaned it to me um, with the intention of playing Final Fantasy VII. But I kind of made the rule, like, we can't play this until we clean up this other room in the house. It has not been played yet. But but David has been playing Red Dead 2. <laughs> we're not going to play it until it's clean. He's like, okay. And I go take a nap and I come back and he's. I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm not playing it though. I'm sticking true. <laughs> You're carrot and sticking yourself to death. I, I, I have tried some new like um, time management techniques. You know the Pomodoro technique, where you work for 25 minutes and then take five minutes off. So you're doing these uh, these little sprints all throughout the day when you have like a minute. And um, but uh, there's another one that I just found out about. If you have a, a something that you really don't want to do, you dedicate 10 minutes a, a day to it for as long as it takes to get done. It doesn't matter how much progress you've made on it. When that 10 minutes is up, you just stop and walk away. That's and awesome. Because people will procrastinate. And, you know, next thing you know, two weeks have gone by. You could have been done in four days using that process. With procrastination, I know um, David Mack always said, uh, just procrastinate the next thing. You don't want to do something else, so do something else. Just procrastinate <laughs> until everything's done. Uh, no. We actually had a, uh, we had a question come in. So what would be your dream book to work on? Character, genre, what what would you just love to do? I uh, have been a runner-up in like five different books I would have enjoyed. Um, this last year has been a soul crusher for me because I almost got Red Sonja and I was like, ah, that was one of the two guys in the running. Um, that hurt. Oh. I'm not going to lie, that hurt. Uh, something hyperborean, you know, Conan, Red Sonja, King Cole, uh, Vikings. I love hacking and slashing. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So um, a lot of people, I, I'm not sure people know, uh, you You did some work with the Watchmen series. Um, you did a the really television series, yeah. Mur- murals piece. Um, actually, Chris told me to ask about this. He still has the Dr. Manhattan you did for him. How, I wonder. Tell us about working on that, what your process was on that. Um, it didn't look like it was going to get done. It didn't look like it was going to get made. Uh, the, the, the people who were managing the art for that series, for that television show gave me a call and said, could you do it? And how much would you do it for? And, uh, so I laid all that kind of stuff out for him. And then I didn't hear from him for months mm-hmm. and they got back, or maybe a couple of months. And then they got back in touch with me and said, okay, we're ready to do it now. I was like, well, uh, you sh- What's that? What are we doing? 
but like you have to make your invoices out to it can't you can't say the watchman you have to say brooklyn i think was the working title of the series at the time yeah so all your invoices have to say brooklyn your checks are gonna say brooklyn on it the brooklyn project or whatever crazy hush hush and then i have to sit on it forever can't say a word about it can't tell anybody about it because their ndas were no fooling ndas yeah but man when the second that i saw it on the tv screen i was like oh check this shit out guys <laughs> it was awesome i mean it's huge and it's bright and it's gorgeous i like, didn't realize it was going to be used so much it was in multiple episodes after that you know um did you did you have an idea of what to, did they come to you and say hey we want dr manhattan doing xyz or did you just go they say hey we want dr manhattan or they used specific reference uh there's a mural in an alleyway in vietnam that has the 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 people characters and the landscape and that little blue wave at the bottom. I don't know if you remember the piece. Uh, it has a lot of the elements in it, but then they said, we want you to drop Dr. Manhattan into this in kind of a Christ-like pose yeah. um, and ape the style and, and make it look as real as possible. But then they also later on, they wanted to make it look a little more like a, a Chinese propaganda, mm -hmm. which is, I don't know, much more colorful and vibrant and almost garish. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and then just keep going until it's done. Did you have to Google Chinese propaganda? Because I'm curious what your search engine looks like now. They sent me a few pieces that they really, really, yeah, no rights. Yeah. <laughs> the feds would be all over me. <laughs> when I work on military books, um, I, I was doing a book with a, a friend of mine who was, uh, combat camera operator in afghanistan and i'm looking up like uh afghan soldier weapons cache uh afghan soldier but yeah <laughs> spider hole <laughs> plans for ambush <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so um what so you can't tell us about exactly what you're working on oh, you, nope. any kind of anything it's one of them the big one is set in the um in the roman empire the late, the end of the real, what we think of as the Roman Empire before the schism and before the, um, before the civil wars sort of really sapped what it was. Like pre-Justinian before like the Byzantine Empire split off sort of thing or? Right. Well, so, uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, so have you, what else have you been doing? Have, so you've just been taking care of your daughter. I was trying to see if you hadn't been really binging anything, I guess. No, nope. who's been doing anything? I'm watching a ton of uh, 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 D and D on Twitch and playing Animal Crossing, and I mean, yeah, there's so there's so little to actually do. I think uh, we were going out walking a lot. We were doing the Silver Comet Trail quite a bit, which yeah. is like a I don't know a long paved road, and then the winds its way through the woods, but. Uh, um, it became a little too crowded and it started to feel sort of unsafe-ish where before you could walk for a mile and not see a single person. Now it's just, you know, it's like the beaches in Tampa. They're just covered. You think it's one of those now, well, we couldn't, so now we have to sort of things? Or? Yeah, I think now we have to. There's no other options. Because I, I find myself like, because I'm pretty much an introvert at home. I like going home and being a homebody. So going, you know, sometimes weeks without doing anything other than grocery shopping wasn't a big deal. But now that I find that I can't do something, I'm like, oh, but now I've got to, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it goes. Oh, I miss, I miss bookstores. Oh. I miss the smell of a bookstore. I miss walking into a comic book shop, you know, and finding some old 25 cent piece of garbage comic that I had when I was a kid and I can't help it. I'm like refilling my old collection for some reason. I don't know why. But that's what we do. We we get what we love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, I've heard that. I don't have a Switch. I wish I need to get a Switch. But I know Chris has a Switch and you're playing Animal Crossing. And mm -hmm. I don't know anything about it, but I feel like I have to ask what the price of turnips is. I was getting 157 later today. Okay. okay. 157 bells. I have no idea what that means, but I felt like it should be asked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's that's not a great price but that's the best price i'm going to get this week and nobody had any better in my circle of friends so 
Have you added Danny Trejo? He put his thing up. Did he really? Yeah. You'll never get in. <laughs> <laughs> what can you have like 10 people on an island at a time? I, I'll see him in 2084. Yeah. When, when that line moves. Um, so what are you, um, trying to think, are there any books that you're looking forward to coming out when things resume? Besides your own. <laughs> besides what? Besides your own book. Yes, there- besides my own. That one is not going to be held up by this at all. You know, we're still, because, because he's self-funding, you know, we're still being productive. It's going to come out at exactly the time that he thought it was going to, which is weird. Uh, now it's like, how is it going to come out? Where is it going to come out? <clears throat> are you guys doing a Kickstarter or anything, or is he just self-published or self-funding? We're going to get to a certain point of production, and then I think he's going to try to kickstart a little bit. He's, I'm pretty sure, I mean, the guy pays like crazy better than uh, big two books do. Um, and on time. What? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to get done with the book no matter what. Uh, the Kickstarter will be just kind of like, just to help it along a little bit. Well, and, and I think that's kind of the responsible thing to do. I've seen so many Kickstarters come out and then, you know, months, weeks, even years down the line, they're still waiting for the book to come out because they mm-hmm. did Kickstarter before the project's done. So I have to say, just thank you <laughs> from you know <laughs> the, the backer side for having the project done before you do the Kickstarter. I mean, that just seems like the best way to do it for me. Um, so what else, what else has been up in your life? I, um, in an effort to stay creative, I've started uh, limiting all of my doodles to, uh, I'm trying to see how much I can get done in a very compressed amount of time. Mm -hmm. So I'll like, I'll put out on Twitter, I'm going to do a sketch, five minutes, first response, that's the one I'm going to do. Tell me what I should draw. And then I'll just, (laughs) as fast as I possibly can. That way I'm not taking too much time away from what I'm regularly doing. Cause I could spend four hours doing a sketch that only, you know, will get like 42 likes on Instagram. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I- I'm able to be in this burst of creativity. And then uh, hopefully, I don't know, hopefully that's keeping the old, uh, the old uh, brain limber. Well, I think that's a great way too. I mean, then also that's a great way to break up the day, like walk away for a minute, do a quick sketch, come back. I, I, I guessing um are you reading anything currently yes i'm working my way through the 2010 version of uh the official handbook of the marvel universe oh wow wow yeah i hadn't seen that in a minute i know people always ask for that one um so what what would you say your favorite marvel is just in general what out of marvel have you enjoyed or have you found out something you didn't know about you, you really don't know about, I mean, they've got, they throw a few 1940s characters in there that you've never heard of. Um, the original, the angel. Yeah. It's just the craziest thing in the world. Um, the, the uh, asbestos lady. Well, there you go. Asbestos lady. I think that's her name. Well, it would make sense. She's a super villain who is asbestos lady. Go, you know. Well, see, you go with villain there, but if you look at Golden Age Wonder Woman, she was putting on asbestos suits to fight fire. But was she really? (laughs) It took me a while to get into it, but I started reading some of the Golden Age Wonder Woman for uh, for a panel I was doing. Mm -hmm. Once you kind of let go and just accept that it is what it is, it's a hoot. So I was it creepy with all the tying up. There was not as much tying up as you'd think, but there's a whole oh. lot of other problematic things. Oh, okay. There you go. It's during that's, how she lost, that's how you could control her powers, right? If you tied her up, she lost her abilities? Well, that's what they said. But mostly she would just let them tie her up and she'd be like, oh, you're going to take me to your cave so I can use that to capture you. And I'm like, no, you just, you just want to be tied up. Which is fine. <laughs> but nobody's here to judge. Yeah. You do oh. you. But yeah, I, I highly recommend going back and looking at some of the Golden Age stuff. But again, you have to look at it through that lens, kind of like the old Looney Tunes, um, mm-hmm. like where they put up the warning that this was wartime. This is not right. But contextually, this is why this was said. Have you ever seen any of the old like World War II Disney or Looney Tunes stuff? Yes, absolutely. And it's it's dark. Yeah, it's about right there. It's dark. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's kind of dark. 
well, kind of dark, but it's always funny because she ends up calling sorority sisters to come help her. I mean, okay. With her psychic mind powers. With her what? Her psychic mind powers, right? Early Golden Age Wonder Woman. Read up on it. Okay, all right. It surprised me. Um, so, trying to think. Uh, have you seen any of the... Have you been catching up on any of the Mandalorian stuff by any chance? Yeah, I'm all caught up through that stuff. All of the... Yeah, well, I'll put it on while I'm working. So it'll be playing to the side, and then that's drawing my attention. It's probably not the best for trying to be productive, but... Uh, <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what's worked well for me in the background sometimes is Tiger King. <laughs> uh, that makes me sad. That makes me so sad because, like, I grew up with those kind of people. Really? I mean, not not like Tiger owners, although had they had money, they would have bought Tigers. That does not surprise me. Uh, I'm thinking more like Trailer Trash. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Um, I, I say that, though. I realize, though, you're right. Putting it on in the background is not good because occasionally they would say something and you'd have to go, excuse me, what? <laughs> so i'm glad to hear you're staying busy um anything else that uh you've got going on right now that's it uh it's it's it feels bad to be so boring but yeah i guess everybody is right like staying at home staying safe limiting contact with other people we uh we decided to um we are co-isolating with another family that has a, a little girl the same age as ours, and so that we can get them together and play. But we're also following like the same protocols. We're not seeing any other family, or we're not spending time with anybody else. And yeah. you know, we pay people to do our shopping, which makes me feel guilty. Well, yeah, I can understand that. It, it, that is very much like a class thing, if you think about it. But that's neither here nor there. That's a whole different discussion. Um, and I feel like we would both need a glass of whiskey. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> hand sanitizer. Well, yeah. Which is more expensive right now, whiskey or hand sanitizer? Eye glass cleaner. No, oh, yeah, hand sanitizer, definitely. So um, are you taking commissions right now? Or do you have a Patreon? Or do you have a web store or anything? Yeah, weirdly. I mean, people found me through the Emerald City. You know, Emerald City was crapped out. And it's going to be crapped out again. They, they rescheduled it for the summer, but there's no way it's going to happen. You know, maybe it'll happen in 2021. I shouldn't have taken last year off conventioning because I am jonesing for a shitty convention right now. I would take the, you know, a one day in a Westin near the airport, sitting next to Stormtrooper number three <laughs> from the video games, not from the movies. The voice actor that's a He's a voice actor in the video games. Um, I would take that in a, in a heartbeat right now. I miss people. I miss talking about comics. I miss sharing comic-y stuff. I miss looking at other people's work that hasn't come out yet or, you know. But through that website, people have been emailing me on a fairly regular basis. I guess they don't have anything else to spend their money on since new books aren't coming out. So I, I've been picking up commission left and right. That's awesome. That's awesome. So they can find you through your website and everything? Yes. Awesome. They can find me at um, joshua.com. I'm on Twitter, at Joshua Hood. Yeah. <laughs> Double okay. one. Oh, this was one that I just got. Oh, Kirk. I did a Kirk. That is awesome. And um, that guy found me through Emerald City, and I need to, I definitely need to send this one out. I'm, I'm good about getting them done kind of quickly, and then very bad about getting them done. Well, with Kirk and something like a licensed property, like Star Trek, do you, are there any kind of special challenges in working in that world? You have to use photographic reference. People are so used to seeing faces, especially faces that they recognize. You know, William Shatner is unique. Yeah. Even though he's just standard white guy you've seen him so many times that you know instantly when something is wrong so you have to do the whole like this is the way the masters did it you got to grid off the thing or you have to do direct copy line art and then ink on top of that because otherwise it's never going to be good enough is that is that something i feel like that would be a little hard to reconcile your art style with with doing something so I don't want to say photorealistic because it's not because it's still comics. 
Um, how do you reconcile your style and having to use something like a live person as a reference? You know, I, I don't. I, 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 I think of it as two different um, ways of working, really. Um, you know, my style is, it, it used to be super duper cartoony and now it's kind of trending a little more realistic, at least in proportions and, and where the eyes are located on the head, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Even though they don't look like actual, actual photographic yeah. style people. Um, but when you do something like this, you just have to put all that crap aside and, you know, um, I'm still doing the composition. I'm still choosing the, the how to ink it. I'm still choosing the colors. I'm still choosing like lighting, but, but it still has to look like Kirk. Yeah. And, and I think that's funny. Cause honestly, that's part of the reason I can't do any of the, the start. I like, I try the star Trek and the star Wars books, but the fact that they look like the person always throws me off a little bit. Oh and yeah. I, really? Yeah. It's just, I'm like, no, I, I don't know. My brain has a problem connecting. The, two. the licensees are so tough about that. That's the worst thing about working on a licensed book, especially like uh, Star Trek or Star Wars is mm -hmm. that they are on you. That's the only thing they have to say to you is it needs to look like more like Leonard Nimoy. It needs to look more like William Shatner. Yeah. So, and that's, that's one of my favorite things. Actually. I like talking to people who've done um, licensed products. What is the weirdest pushback you've gotten? Have you gotten any pushback or? Is it just very much you need to, this needs to look like, you know, Kirk? Yeah, it's just very much more of the same kind of stuff. Or they'll say, um, what was one that I got? Uh, too sexy? Did, did too sexy? And I didn't think, I mean, I don't, I'm not known for like drawing women in aggressively sexual poses or, or exaggerated. You know, I try to really tone that down. Um, but I guess because Star Trek is so family focused mm -hmm. that Uhura was just, that's too much, bro. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> get it back it off. See, I, you're throwing me for a loop. Cause I, I never would have pegged you as cheesecake, like at all. And there's nothing wrong with cheesecake. If you want cheesecake, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not. I do have a great story about that. I did once uh, I was working on a justice league miniseries that was written by Chris Claremont oh. and, uh, quite a quite a feather in my hat. Nobody's ever heard of it though, so you know how great was it? Uh, and Wonder Woman becomes this monster. She's covered in scales and she's got spikes coming out of her head. And when I drew her, she was crouched down with her hands, you know, like reaching out like this. Well, her underwear is it has stars on it, and it's always symmetrical. So there's always that one star in the middle. And Claremont's wife saw that and said. Yeah, we're not putting, we're not, this is not going out. <laughs> you don't want to put the star? <laughs> the star was like a giant bullseye for her. So <laughs> I had to completely redraw that uh, because Chris Claremont's wife was like, nope, nope, nope. You know what? Somebody's got to look out. I um, wasn't trying to be creepier or? No, no. Just, you know. Um, but we did have another question. Do you work mostly digital or are you using pencil and ink? It's become a mixture of both. I will do all the layouts digitally. And um, now since um, original art sales is still a fairly lucrative part of our industry, if I ever make it to a damn convention again, um, I will print the blue lines on Bristol and then ink those. So mm -hmm. it's still original art ish. Yes. Well, I mean, you still did all of it, right? Yeah. And, and then that's what they'll, that's the artwork that they'll use in the book. So it's not like you're getting a, you're not, it's not like you're getting a page that I did after the fact and, and inked, you know, it, it is the art that's in the book. That's awesome. Except for like action scenes and splashes and big hero face scenes, you know, things that would actually sell. But I, I used to throw pages away that nobody, wanted nobody wants a picture of peter parker walking through the daily planet office building but they do that's the I, <laughs> they didn't oh but they didn't <laughs> well um we're we're at our time thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us and i know you you've let everybody know where to find you that you are accepting commissions or is there anything <laughs> else we can help you move or anything other way we can help support you no i'm good take care of yourself <laughs> all right well, thank you so much again, and I'm going to stop the stream.